Get it going, get it going, get it going. Hey, hey, whoop, whoop. I don't know what that was, but, uh, man. How you guys doing, man? Christmas is, like, a week away. <laughs> if you are in the Midwest, dude, it's warm outside. And I don't know if you guys are still landscaping. What up, Gunslinger Power? Blessings Lawn. Did I say Blessings Lawn? Yeah, Gunslinger Power. Yeah, yeah, what up? Brandon's Lawn Care, Taurus Landscaping, Xander Crowen, Banks 2. Yeah, Blessings Lawn, dude. Burriff, Phrase Lawn Care. <laughs> oh, man, the power of the internet is amazing. So, the wife of Tron has officially tricked me. If you can tell, I'm still in my work clothes. And I'm walking in around the mall. This is the outdoor mall in Michigan. They got all nice and lit up. You can bring your dog. So what's up, Miko? And I'm trying to take a nap, exhausted from work. I'm laying in bed, just exhausted. She goes, let's go to the mall and walk the dog. <laughs> I'm like, I'm fucking tired, woman. Right? Nico. And she's like, all I want to do is go walk the dog at the mall. Whatever. Let's go. Still in the work clothes, haven't even showered in my own field. Milchimp is amazing. And I will tell you about it. Let me finish my story. So, we, we as you can see behind me, is the, the Victoria's Secret pink. And she tricks me and she goes, Honey, will you hold the dog while I go into Victoria's Secret? She had this shit planned the whole time. See, women, they have ulterior motives and agendas. Yes. And they always wanted to go into Victoria's Secret Pink. We should actually take the dog into Victoria's Secret and go find it. No, I did not get my camera back. It was freaking stolen while we were in a job site working. I walked away for a minute. It was with all my other tools. And somebody walked out of a restaurant where we were working at the restaurant on the property and they stole the camera. Yes. Oh. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. And... I got the guy in security footage. I got the guy, I got pictures of him and everything. A uh, guy and his friend, he looked, He walked out, he looked at my 500 hour camera with the 64 gigabyte chip in it, with two months of footage, all of our fall cleanups, everything, episodes. This ain't funny, man. Took my camera. So I found a new one, uh, a used one on eBay for like 250 bucks, whatever. It's not the camera, it's the footage. But if you're a type of person who gets stuff done, I mean, it's not the snake bite, it's the venom, right? It's not like, you see, if I, found, if I found a camera sitting somewhere, like on this table, you know, I'd look around, I'd wait, I'd guard it for a minute or two. I wouldn't take it, I really wouldn't. I would go, I'd turn it in somewhere because I know that's not my camera. But at no point was I ever mad at the guys who did it or did I think any bad thoughts. I don't know why. I'm, it just is what it is. Um, but it was downright theft. What they don't understand, tiny little card, yeah, 64 gigabytes of footage. Do you know how much it costs me to film at work? Like, and it's not about me, it's just, it, it costs me, I probably spend two to 300 a week in time filming at work. I mean, this is crazy, right? And I, I love doing it, it's a passion. I love making, uh, tips and videos and funny shit but it's gone whatever but I like I was saying if you're the type of person who gets stuff done you can go out and recreate it and make it better next time if someone rips off a backpack blower from you oh, it happened to me this spring you just go to the go to the dealer and buy a new one if someone rips off your landscape trailer well you have a right to be upset yeah I got this and I got all black polo shirts with um green lettering writing and it does look a lot sharper. And I think I'm gonna be wearing those from now on. Cause it looks a lot sharper, and also especially when you're selling jobs and stuff. Shh, I don't wanna get a new truck. I was really thinking about this today. Cause I do, I go on Craigslist and shit, I look at car lots, I'm looking at newer trucks or new trucks all the time. I'm like, no, I want to drive this old truck and keep fixing it. Uh, EA Graphics, eagraphics.com. 
the wife of Tron's sister is actually the head graphic designer there. And getting into mowing. Maybe. If I get commercial properties, I'll definitely get into mowing. What up, Case 3 Evan? So MailChimp. You want me to talk about MailChimp? Mike's window cleaning. Oh, that's pretty cut and dry. So MailChimp is um, it's awesome. One of my favorite marketers, Mike Dillard. He is huge. He's totally famous. And this guy still uses MailChimp. What I like about it, it's totally free account. I don't get paid to say any of this stuff. That I'm not, you know, I do support them because I use MailChimp for all my my business emails, like my landscaping business. So go to MailChimp.com and set up a free account, and then you can send them up to 2,500 emails a month for free. But you can't create up like a uh, set up an autoresponder and things like that. Once you pass 2,500 emails, you're gonna pay 25, 35, 55, all the way. You're gonna start paying for it, but it's not gonna be for. I suggest five years you can get away with free emails and how that works for those of you who don't know. MailChimp.com is you can set up like a a template with a a graphic design of a flyer, a newsletter, coupons, stuff like that that you oh, excuse me that you send out to your clients monthly, different seasons, different occasions. And you do an email blast, they get it in their inbox from you. And then, oh, like, so basically what I'm saying is get an, get your, get an email address from every single one of your clients, no matter what. Make it habit, repeat it over and over in your head. Oh, while well, I'm getting your contact information now, what is your email address so we can uh, communicate with you? What is your email address so I can send you a quarterly newsletter? Then you build up your uh, your Rolodex of email addresses in your phone. If you got, it doesn't matter if you have Android or iPhone. You save it under your business email address. You know their contact. Mine would be like Kelfa Services. Then you import all that into Mailchimp on your laptop. When it populates a list of hundreds of email addresses, you press send. Boom! You've just sent that email to four or five hundred people. I have a personal subscriber base of all my tightest clients of about 410 people that I send emails to quarterly. And then I have a larger email database of about 1,400 people. And then I have an even larger email database of 3,400 people total that I've ever done work for, period. As you've seen a Geek to Freaks video where he was talking about the difference between landscaping and lawn care. When you're in like landscape or landscape maintenance like I'm doing, you have to constantly be going out and getting more and more and more and more work. It's not one time only because you do get a lot of referrals and repeat customers. Like my customers, instead of doing lawns every single week, I'm there four times a year. This is probably my average visit per client, maybe maybe two to four times per year. But I've got a shit ton of clients, right? And you can actually have less clients when you do landscape and landscape maintenance. Have you ever had to take lots of time off for an injury? Yeah, I actually have. I'll tell you that one second. So we spend, we do about one to two jobs a day, and I like the jobs that take two to three days, just on one property, instead of driving all over the place doing like 20 jobs, 30 jobs a day, and I've done that too, but, so it's more slow and spread out, but it's more money per job. So you can either cut a whole bunch of lawns in high frequency, or you can do landscape jobs. It's all, what do you want to do? I'm sick of lawn care, I did it my whole life. Imagine doing 30 lawns a day from the age of like, I don't know, 17 to 27 for 10 years straight. All right, personal injury. I I pulled or almost tore the ligament in my knee like really bad to the point where I couldn't walk back in 2004. Oh, that hurts. Yeah, an injury sucks. This was all the way back in 2004 for me. I think I had to take... I was off work for like a month, dude. I couldn't even walk, it sucked. And it took three years for it to completely heal where I could walk normal again and actually jog. So from 2003 to 2006, um, you know, I had a limp going on. So, And now ever since that, I think that kind of happened for a reason. I'm like real careful at work, don't do any stupid shit. I thought one time I was back in a, a X mark rider off the trailer and my buddy Steve was working <laughs> you ever like start up the mower and just rip it down off the trailer 
I don't know why I did this, but Steve was standing right next to the mower, mower inside of the trailer grabbing the weed whip off the rack. We call them weed whips. And I'm backing up. And this motherfucker jumped. He jumped so high, so fast, he because the caster on the front of the wheel, dude, this thing would have just like ripped his leg off. And he's like, whoop! Oh shit, that was loud. I'm like totally into this. So he jumped. <laughs> People are looking at me, what the fuck's going on? And uh, I almost hurt somebody really bad. Another time, my buddy Brent, I've had worked with a lot of friends. No, I'm not gonna yell something real loud in the pink store because I did that on the way in here. I was like walking like a robot or something and the wife is like, will you stop it? You're acting weird. I'm like, this is the whole fucking point, right? Um, so my, my buddy came and worked with us for a couple weeks in between jobs. And he, I guess he didn't understand safety. My other buddy Steve is, uh, one guy's getting the edger off the rack, the other guy's getting the weed whip. It's an open face trailer. Brent holds the throttle down full speed on the weed whip and pulls it and it goes <laughs> starts up immediately full speed while Steve is standing literally right next to him and he went <laughs> and fucking all I saw was blood everywhere he weed whipped his fucking leg off and it, it was nasty dude like all, from here to here it must have hit him like 40 times in a split second and Steve stood there totally calm. He's like, no, I have to fucking work eight more hours with blood running down my socks. Thanks a fucking lot. And you know what my friend said, who weed whipped his leg? He goes, well, you fucking idiot. He says, you shouldn't have been standing there while I was starting the whip, you idiot. And then even five years later, we bring it up to him and he's like, he still wouldn't accept fault. He says that, Maybe I shouldn't be talking about this right now because uh, he thinks it was the other guy's fault because he shouldn't have been standing there while he was starting the weed whip. The man who's operating the machine, it's his responsibility to be safe. Dog pooped on the sidewalk? Oh, yeah. Every time we go places, she forgot the dog poop bag. <laughs> yeah, cut his hand open, sharpening blades. Um, my old boss, Mike Clancy, this guy's awesome. He's Irish and he's like got a temper dude. So a blade was bent like a damn question mark because guy's out cutting like an idiot, runs over like a tree stump or something. And Mike's in the garage with the blade on the boy vice and he was being cheap and didn't whatever, he didn't want to fix the Come on, Miko. Stop it. He's taking a, a, a mini sledgehammer and hitting the blade, trying to straighten it back out while he's sharpening it. He got so pissed off, he started hitting the blade with a sledgehammer to bend it back, because he was in the, you know, top clock was ticking. In the corner of the blade, a whole section broke off and flew and stuck in his leg like a Chinese star that deep, and blood was running on his leg. He had to like drive to the clinic real fast, get it taken out, stitches, tetanus shot. What else did he do? Oh yeah, one time he freaked out. I've had bosses lose it, dude. Because, and now I understand, when you own a landscape company, I need to calm the fuck down. How are you saying that right now? I don't know if I should... <laughs> Alright, this summer... Forrest and I split up. He goes in one truck, I go in the other. And I'm always jumping along. I'm like, dude, you need to secure the tarps properly. Make sure everything you do is like... Be super safe, especially when you're on the road. Keep your following distance. He's got a chauffeur's license. He's smart. I trust him and stuff. But he went on the freeway, and we use uh, like cinder blocks almost on the back of the tarps to hold the, you know, the tarp and the truck down, and bungee straps. Well, the tarp was blowing in the wind like this on the freeway. It created like an air pocket, and it literally threw the cinder block up on the freeway at 70 or 60 miles an hour. And he tells me the next morning, he's like, oh, by the way, uh, I noticed that the, uh, the cinder block was, uh, uh, it was missing, and I think I lost it on the freeway. I'm like, what did you just say to me? The fucking cinder block? Did you go back? Did you stop? What happened? He's like, well, I don't know. I just figured Occam's or is he gives me this, like, logical crap, because he always gives me these mathematical equations. Yeah, 300, right? I'm like, I'm going back right now. I didn't care we had a job or nothing, dude. I sped all the way over five, six miles to where the freeway was, driving up and down the freeway with my heart pounding, searching, like, the news for accidents and shit, having a fucking panic attack. 
And what happened was I saw the cinder block all the way on the side of the freeway on the shoulder, like it just crumbled into pieces. It was actually like a landscape keystone. And it, it just fell off and rolled, but I was like, dude, you have to fucking be very, very careful and make sure everything is secure. Don't even take the truck on the freeway anymore. So, I'm like real paranoid. You, you got your own business, dude. I don't know if you're anything like me, but everything to me is about being safe. I'll spend an extra five minutes jumping all over a truck, making sure it's perfectly secured and tied down. Dude, if something falls off the truck and rolls, you ever seen the movie Final Destination? I think my old man pound the shit in my head at any second. Your entire life can be turned around. At any second, you could lose everything. At any second, you could do something stupid that will land your ass sitting in a courtroom, bawling your eyes out behind the scenes, losing fucking everything. Yeah. And, and I realize that so fully. I, I'm so consciously aware of the littlest tiny thing that you do, man. What if you're chainsawing something and, I don't know, you're being stupid and you cut your fingers off? You're in Hopefully you can get them sewed back on. So, I just, uh, when you get an anxiety at work and you start rushing and stomping on the gas and swerving or something, you like that, that road rage feeling because you're so frustrated. That's when accidents happen. And also, when you get too confident to the point of being cocky, where you feel, what's, it's a certain emotion. I can't explain it. You know what I'm talking about, though. Like, something breaks, something happens. This is a Lhasa Apso. His name is Miko. He looks like a fucking Ewok. Look at him. Look at him. He's a fucking Ewok. Miko. If I could, it wasn't damn holding his phone. There you go. He's famous. Brrr. Hey, fucking Ewok. I know he's, he's not the best looking dog, but uh, she loves him, and I have adopted him. Did I adopt you? Nico, are you a good boy? All I have to do... Oh, he's a good boy. If this dog is out running, if he runs off or something, chases a squirrel, checks out. I let this dog out in the morning and I don't have him on a leash. This dog could have to shit and piss so bad that his fucking eyes are floating and his eyes are crossed. Waiting by the door to take a shit, right? I'll let him out the door and if this motherfucker sees a squirrel... I don't care if he's, his shit is coming out of his asshole. If he sees a squirrel, this motherfucker will run 80 miles per hour, like, across a freeway in front of cars. Go get that squirrel. Squirrel? Nico, where's the squirrel? Go get that squirrel. Or, <laughs> or all I have to do is say to him, uh, ice cream. Do you have, like, a language you talk to your dog in? I go, ice cream. Ice cream. Where's the ice cream? Uh, you know what I did one time? I was sitting there separating a, uh, a Thanksgiving turkey or some shit. No, fuck that. I'm not singing more. Right so I'm separating a Thanksgiving turkey one time, and the dog is bagging. You know how they sit there and they bag for a piece of chicken? Chicken. And you rip off a little piece, you give it to the dog, I throw it on the floor. Um, and he wouldn't stop bagging. I'm like, you want some fucking turkey? Huh? Huh? So I kept giving him more and more and more turkey. I probably fed this dog... <laughs> Like probably a like a pound or more of turkey to the point where he literally could not eat another bite, and he was like wobbling and shit. And he went to go lay down, and I followed him around with the turkey, and I kept putting it up to his face. You want some fucking turkey, huh? Huh? You want some fucking turkey? <laughs> and then he just like went to sleep. I like to do that. What am I, what am I talking about right now? Let's go on this. Let's go find White Patron. Can I even bring the phone in here? Is there any dogs allowed in here? Oh, no dogs allowed. Look at this. Look at this. Look. look. No, no, Miko, you're not allowed. You've come in, so I'm gonna have to let a stranger hold on to you. Where is the wife of Tron? Hi. Hi. 
towards the white patron. Just waiting in line. Did you guys get your women anything for Christmas? They don't want the cheap stuff. You know what this thing is right now? What store is this? What do you mean? The Victoria's Secret pink store? Come on. Try this, don't you? Yeah. No, 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 no. So, um, what are we say? Oh yeah, hunter boots for women. I don't know what this is all about. Oh, it is a service dog. PTSD from Nam. No, I'm not doing that. That's crazy. I'm not creeping in on the Victoria's Secret store. Um, what was I going to say? Freaking me out. I'm not going to say it. Motherfucker. When we first got married, we are on our honeymoon. I'm not even going to fucking say anything. Business in Ann Arbor, you know how far that is from me here? That's 2.5 hours, Ann Arbor. No. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where can I get some of those headphones? These? Bluetooth uh, HBS 750s by LG. You can get them on eBay for 40, 50 bucks. They're the 850 models and then like the 900 models. I like the old 750 models because I I have all of them. They're like seven pairs that I've gone through. 750s are the best to me. They sync to any phone. LG should endorse me, eh? That'd be cool. Buy them from me? Can't buy them from me. You could buy them from eBay. Look, see? You stick them in here. Oh my God, then you're instantly wired up to the internet. The information just is going in your head. And the secret about these, you could be driving with your old lady and she's talking in one ear and you got the, uh, you know, you got the internet's going in the other ear and you're like, uh-huh. Yeah, uh, you just, that's, that's how it is when you're married, you, <laughs> you pretend like you're engaged in the conversation, and you just give them a, uh, yeah, and you're just thinking about some other, you're thinking about like, oh, this new chainsaw, <laughs> and that's how you play it off, right? When I first got, uh, no, marriage does not suck, it's actually good. If you want to know the truth, there's no greater feeling than being with one, one woman, like, Period. Building a life, building memories, building and sharing and growing and fucking loving. It's crazy. She's fucking crazy, man. I'll tell you the truth. She's fucking. <laughs> oh, dude. We first. It was funny. If you watch some of my other periscopes, I started them. <laughs> yeah, she definitely puts up with me, dude. <laughs> oh, fuck. Uh, when you tell a woman something, like, <laughs> being engaged in a conversation, oh, fuck, you gotta watch what you say. <laughs> oh, man, but we're very happy. Can you get your wife in here to cooperate, cooperate? Yes, I can, actually. <laughs> oh, man, now she's putting me on the hot spot. <laughs> you don't know the white patron, bro. This woman is <laughs> here. I, my uh, life coach, Coach Rob. I asked him. I said, "So when you finally master it and you you man up and you become the yin to the yang to your woman and you can dance with her in the masculine feminine dance moment by moment and be there and be the staff in the wind that never crumbles, no matter what." I'm so sorry. I am so sorry. For what? Because the line was atrocious and two people cut in front of me. Hey. There was line color cutters and I called them out. I was not shy. I, and then I told the girl, she's like, sorry about the wait. I was like, well, I'm like, when people cut, you should say something to them. Like, uh, this person was in line before I Kiss her. Oh, she doesn't want to kiss me. I do, but okay. I'm shy. Why? Oh, she doesn't like, um, what's that? P D A. P. I don't know what it's called. Something like that. Why don't she? she, she she's like. Uh, I try to like. I'm shy to kiss in public. 
Yeah, I've tried to like kiss her in public or like put my arms around her and she gets like real freaked out and stuff. And I understand. She is very legit. She's very intelligent. Hey. So what did you get? Can you uh, show everyone what you got? Yeah, well, I got stuff for like uh, Simone's birthday gift and my, my niece's... Uh, what is this? Take it out. We're going to see this. You can just see it in the bag. They're lotions and sprays. Oh, okay. Yeah, the so these are gifts I, for other people. Yeah, I paid fifteen dollars oh. for all of this. So she is a bargain shopper, and it is legit. Fifteen dollars. See now, now I'm sticking my foot in my mouth. I'm joking with everybody saying that she's you know? in a Victoria's Secret. No, fifteen dollars. That's all I said. Ask spent. her to try for it two out. Two presents. What'd she say? Try what out? She got tissue. No, no. <laughs> it's it's like uh, condiments or what are those things? Sediments. They're. No, it's lotion and like a like a body spray. In tissue paper. And then the tissue paper they put the tissue paper in the bag. In the bag, yes. Okay, but so where are we going next? Are we going to the Apple store? You can go to the Apple and store. And tissue. I already got everything I want from <laughs> Apple. <laughs> oh man, my hands are freezing out here. Tissue is the best part. The lights, yes, they can all see the lights. I guess Chili got the uh, new LG V10 by. What is this? Checks up. Have her warm them up. Warm what up? Oh, my hands are freezing. No, she doesn't like PDA. Oh, whatever. Look at this. I'll do it. This phone is incredible. We're in Michigan. Where we have to wear hats and jackets. Signing off. Joe DePace, Gunslinger Power. LG what? The LG. And like, look at this, the, two for 24. It's like, the new. Those never are 20. Those three, those candles are. It's the new LG V10. Those candles what, are. What, this? Yeah, those are awesome. Why do you like all this stuff? Because they're a good deal. If, if, if I take these guys into the Bath and Body, Bath and Body Works, they're all going to unsubscribe. Whatever. Oh, whatever to you. I just want to see what they got. Oh my god, I got to plug my nose up in that time. Okay, so I'll go to the Apple store and you can go in here. See you in a minute. Okay. We're going to the Apple store, bitches. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't know why not too many people are here. It should be packed right now. Cause I we got another indoor mall right down the street and that, that place you can't even move. Where the fuck is the Apple store? Oh, it's actually way back that way. I don't really care much for the mall. But, finally the Apple store. I know for a fact, for Christmas, she got me this, uh... What's this? It's not a Moto 360, it's the... Samsung Gear S2 smartwatch. So this thing does everything. It's an entire phone on your wrist. You can talk in it, you can check notification apps, do everything you want. Yeah. I was gonna get her the Fitbit too, but I don't know if she'll wear it. She is a waitress, so that's actually a good idea. Because she can like count all her steps. Because she's always like talking about how her feet hurt and stuff like that, and I'm massaging her feet. My feet hurt from waitressing. And I, be I believe her. And she'd be like, I walked 8,000 steps today. Hey, do you guys know where the Apple store is? Right over Back that way? That's what I love about strangers, man. You can just ask them anything. So I got this new smartwatch. I know for a fact I got it. And I, I didn't really want her to spend any money on me, but... Like, if it wasn't her, I'd probably should be still wearing clothes from the thrift store. So, I got all these, like, nice guest clothes and stuff like that. Because her talk specifically about... Customized... Oh, you gotta type it again. Ground services for clients. Do you want me to take the picture of you? No. Oh, you Thank got the you. selfie down. It takes us a while. See, the older crowd, is, they're picking up on it. They really got it. Here we go. I'm a PC guy myself, and, and to tell you the truth, I know for a fact Apple's actually is better. Everything's integrated. As far as computers and computer power, ask them if they have the Android phone. Hell no. They'd probably attack you, bro. Okay, we'll give it a minute. Okay, so we're in the Apple store. 
No, we're not done for the year. We're still working. iPad Pro, your maintenance programs are... I will, but I can't do it now because I'm in the Apple Store. Do you have an iPad Pro? What is it? Snapchat? Oh, this is Periscope. Oh, um, what are you saying right now? iPad Pro? Those big ones? Oh, look at your favorite artist. So, iPad Pro, wow, this is actually sweet. So, a thousand bucks. Wow. You could probably do everything on it, obviously. Fox Lawn Care. I'm not yelling droid BNB. Stop it. But check this out. So this this LG V10 has got a 4K camera, obviously, but it can process and it's made for video editing. You can edit videos fast on this. I'm gonna look at this uh, Fitbit thing real quick. I think I talked about it before and she didn't express any interest in it. I'm like, I, the smartwatch by Apple has the, um, the Fitbit options, right? Oh, I got a hundred bucks. These are actually pretty dope. Should I get her a smartwatch? I don't, I don't know if she would even like it. She says she doesn't. But she could, like, walk around just talking on it. She's on the phone all the damn time on speakerphone. She would never wear it, though. Wouldn't that suck if I spend, like, 350 bucks on a smartwatch and she never wears it? I don't think she'd wear it. I'm gonna ask her if she'll wear it, and I'll definitely buy it for it. I already got her these Hunter boots and this Alex and Annie stuff and this North Face stuff, and probably spent a lot of money on the wife of Trump. She was so against I think I'll probably spend like I don't know, almost 700 bucks on her. Gift cards. Go to the purse store? No. I'll tell you the You know what she wants? <laughs> Forget it, bro. Do all women want this this Louis Vuitton purse thing? I don't even know what this thing is, but I walked in the Louis Vuitton store once, and I walked right back out. I don't even think I would buy a Louis Vuitton. I can't even say it if I was a freaking millionaire, bro. I like the joke. Look at these kids. They know everything. Little kids can pick up an iPad and just start figure it out faster than adults. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember these? Back in the day when they first came out? They changed my life. get the hell out of here I think I'll eventually switch over to Mac but for now it's PC because that's what I know and I'm outie I did notice it's like a totally different vibe in there bro I just like ran away from the wife of Tron I don't give a Call my other phone. Anybody got family members that call them in the middle of the day when you're at work? They'll be like, hello. And they'll be like, hey, what's going on? Oh, I'm at work right now. I'm on a job site. Look, you're sitting with a backpack blower on your back or you just shut off a machine to answer the phone. Which I try to leave my phone in my truck sometimes, but you don't. Know. And then they just start blabbing as though you're not working. You're like, listen, I really gotta get back to work. Swarovski crystals. I already got her some of those. 
All right, I'll tell you one thing. One time, the wife of Tron was sleeping, and I woke up in the middle of the night. Yeah. I woke up in the middle of the night, and I started looking through our wedding photos album, and I played some of our wedding songs, like on YouTube, and I broke down crying on the couch. And I think that's an amazing thing. Because I cannot believe... I, I just really believe if... I know I'm serious now. If you... If you found your better half and you... I don't know. We got the, You got the world by the balls, dude. If you... If you got your health and a sound mind and... Someone to love... I'll do this thing I'll be laying in bed all tired And I'll yell to her <laughs> My feet are all dirty and shit I haven't showered with my socks on And half the sock is hanging off like this and shit All dirty We call it Jerry Toes And I go honey She's fucking doing the dishes and shit She won't answer I go honey She goes what? I'm doing the dishes Come rub my feet. <laughs> it doesn't work. In my big man, I'll be like, come crack my toes. I can't believe I'm telling you this shit. My wife started taking pills. <laughs> there are... It's slim pickings. There are not a lot of good mates out there. I say it in Australian. Wait, mate would be friend. Mates. There's. It's slim pickings, dude. You find a good one, dude, wife her up, bro. Stay with her forever. And work through everything, no matter what. And be happy and count your blessings. You guys doing good? Eric, remember lights? We're still getting calls, man, this weather. We're doing, um, we did a fall cleanup and tree trimming all day today. Blowing leaves out of garden beds. This customer actually has a, a koi fish pond. And I was trying to blow it all away from the pond, all the leaves and shit. It was still going in there, so we had to scoop it all out. And raking shit up on tarps dumping it in the back of the truck the br600 is the bomb i had this little br430 i bought it after my other backpack blower got stolen because i didn't want to spend any money yes dude and i know that 2016 is going to be huge i can feel it oh there's the wife's turn over there the br600 when i started up this backpack blower <laughs> um dude this thing this thing could blow down a fucking house. Like the big bad wolf. It's a like, What's up? Hey. What'd you get now? There's a really good Christmas present for me inside of Bath and Body Works. For you? They're two for 24, the candles. Oh. Candles are two for 24. They're always like $24 a piece by himself. So it's like buy one, get one free. Really? Yeah. Okay, so she wants candles? She wants Ugg boots. I don't know how long that deal's going on for. Okay. I might have coupons at home, so I'm going to give them to you. Okay? Because you might be able to get them for cheaper because they got coupons at home. I'm interested. Uh, Fox's lawn care. The wife trying to... Uh, one second. Oh, she already knows who Fox Lawn Care is. Yeah. I didn't even have to remind her. No, because he fought, I, I, yeah. She's a good saleswoman. She's a very good saleswoman. I try to be. Okay, uh, do you want an Apple Watch for Christmas? Like, you literally just walk around and talk on it. Why would you get me that, though? Like, that's, like, out of this world. Would you actually use it? He would, the he would thing? be like, wait, do you want an Apple Watch for Christmas? Because I can get it for zero down, but you would only have to pay an extra like 15, 20 bucks a month. What do you mean? Oh, because you got to pay for the subscription? No, like I would have to pay on the, the iWatch because you would just roll it into our bill. 
You know what I mean? Oh, I got it. So there's a contingency built in. Is that it's what not you... just the the watch. Was there a contingency, it's or were the... you just gonna pay cash for it? Oh, I would never put it on our plan because we already have like eight devices, bro. Yeah. So, Let's but uh, my question is, would you use the thing? Probably. I mean. <laughs> She would actually use the Apple Watch if I got it for her. This thing is like 350 bucks. I'm gonna have to find a way to separate temporarily and sneak back into the Apple store and get the wife a freaking Apple Watch. <clears throat> I know, but it makes up for a Louis Vuitton purse. Hi. Oh, this, this fire looks cozy, man. It's actually warm. Oh, I can feel the heat coming off. It's nice outside. They have this thing going all winter. Yeah. Can you guys hear the Christmas music playing? Look at Miko. Miko is good. It's peaceful here. <laughs> Come here, Miki. It's okay. He likes Miko. The kids like Miko. Yeah, they do. They like his underbite. He was Santa Paws yesterday. I dressed him up like Gunslinger Santa. Gunslinger Power, what up? Huh? I dressed Miko up like Santa yesterday. No kids yet, bro. I knew you were going to say it. Every single time kids come up. Um, hey. What? They're asking the question. Mm mm, what? No. No, what? No, not yet. No kids? Not yet. We heard have Here's the thing. I lost you there when the wife was talking. Does anybody want to adopt a cat? I mean, we could get rid of a cat and then maybe we could have some kids. <laughs> maybe. The goal is to become financially free and then have kids. And everybody says, you'll never have enough money. You just got to have them now. And then I know people who have kids. No, we have a rescue cat we haven't found a home for. And he needs a home. Like, my other two cats bully him. It's so sad. The little Kelphises will be the shit. Oh, that would be awesome. Come on. So, we're going to have a little Joseph. Let's walk around. Or a little Michelle. Don't do it. <laughs> we get so much harder. I can work. I want. Does your dad want us to come over or what? Oh yeah, we gotta stop by Papa Kelf's house, man. My old grandmother has uh, gone completely senile and my dad has to take care of her 24-7. It's going crazy, man. My dad has owned lawn care company back in the day. And how I started was I was cutting grass with him for like four bucks a lawn. And then... I don't know, by the time I hit 17, I'm like, Dad, let's go into business together and make a bunch of money. He's like, no. Plus 20? No. As soon as, as soon as I know for a fact the money is legit and I could hire someone to clean her house and totally afford daycare and she could be a stay-at-home mom, because I can't deal with any more stress right now. I would never want to be like a, like a stay-at-home like mom all the way, though. Job optional. No, job optional. I have a business to run. Oh, a business to run. Yeah, I have to. I'm still going to be making my aprons. Oh. I'm not going to stop. Go be done. AshleyAprons.com. She is a patented inventor. I'm about to be patented all over the whole world. Cost a lot of money. So where are we going now? Yeah, and it's going to cost more, and I'm not ready for it, and I don't want to spend it, but... We're doing the marketing for her website and shooting videos. If you look up Ashley Aprons, you'll see what I mean. So all the women who are waitresses instantly get it. Take it on Shark Tank. What's your response? I don't know. <laughs> Everybody's been saying that, but I don't even like know, you know, like what that's all about. I don't want to like get myself into something and then like, you know. To tell them how like a. Uh, uh, YouTube but fans. But they would definitely invest so I wouldn't have to come out of pocket for a lot of things. What? She, she comes over from work and she says that YouTube fans like come into her work. Keith. Oh, the dog is shitting and we don't have bags right in the middle of the mall. <laughs> oh my god, I need yeah. a bag right now. Oh, okay, this is so embarrassing. We're embarrassing 
No, I'm not embarrassed at all. I just need a damn bag. I'll run up into the GNC store. Oh, you do have bags. Whenever I walk the dog around the block, just leave it and run. I like bring a bunch of bags with me. Because in the beginning. Oh, the tissue. See? Good what are we talking about here? California Pizza Kitchen. I've been eating leftovers. Fast box score. It's pretty cool. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Burn it. Burp. Bur I get what you're saying. Are we done here? Can you, can you get anything else, woman? No? No, I just need to do my last minute Christmas shopping. Tim Hortons, you guys got Tim Hortons? Fuck. That just reminded me, I brought a hot coffee in and I left it on a trash can over there. Whatever, get another one. I can't, yeah, we gotta go to Papa Kelf's. I can't wait for the season to be over, man. Seriously, I'm just burned out from landscaping. I did 14 hours a day every day can't last week. Can't wait week. for it to snow. Yeah. You guys plow snow? Oh, our umbrellas. We left our umbrellas too. OMG. I left my coffee and umbrellas on a table. Okay, Nico, you can get a little bit more. I could sprint over there and just get it real quick. Well, it was all the way in the middle of the mall by Victoria's Secret. Mm -hmm. It's your fault. So I don't know what to do. I have to like move our address off of our house and over to port it over to the office and everything. I was talking to Geek to Freak about this on the phone like two days ago. He's like, I don't even know if I should get into it. Trimming bushes and small trees. Trimming bushes. Okay, so if you trim a, ro a row of boxwood shrubs or hedges, let's say it goes from there all the way to out there, you're looking at literally $160 just to trim a row of shrubs. And the customer will be like, it, it really depends on the client because some people can't see the value in it. They don't understand. You know, if you could trim them real fast and just it just looks kind of like shit, then whatever. Keep it all hourly. If, you know, 45 bucks a man hour. But trimming small trees, I believe, is where the money is at because the customer really cannot do it how hard they try, no matter how hard they try. So if you're looking at a small tree, I'll, I'll charge 85 bucks to trim up a small ornamental tree and be done with it in, I don't know, 20 minutes. And I just believe it's prof profitable because once you experience making I don't know, let's say four, 400 bucks a day profit, multiple days in a row, and you've passed, I don't know, it all depends on where you're at. Let's say you've passed the $1,500 a week profit margin, like every single week after all expenses, and you're moving up into 1,600 a week. Then you look back down at like, you know, six, seven, 800 a week, and you're like, I can't, I can't do that anymore because I, I want to live my dreams here. I don't want to just make enough to get by but the weeks that really messed me up uh, I know some of you guys are making 10,000 a week every single week and 10 million a week the most I've ever made a week trimming trees was we hit a bunch of jackpot jobs and I think I did I don't know, I've done over five grand in a week profit and it actually was not exciting the opposite absolute opposite happened it made me realize that how hard you work for such a little money and how you can do more of what works and do less of what doesn't. Dude, I would love to do a TEDx. I want to do it so bad. So we bang our heads against the wall doing stuff that doesn't make us money. I've done it. I did a punch my steering wheel. Come home exhausted. My first year in business. 
It was working for free, man. I didn't even have the confidence to tell the customer because we grew up poor. Very poor. There's her hot, cold coffee. And I didn't even have the confidence to tell a customer that it would be this amount of dollars. I was like, oh, what do you think it cost? I mean, I was an absolute wuss because I was, I was afraid. We had never hired anybody to do, or do landscaping when I was growing up, and none of my neighbors did because we grew up in a shitty, poor neighborhood. So I couldn't wrap my head around why anybody would pay for it or pay me. And now it's the exact opposite. I've gotten to the point where... Let me do up this umbrella. Okay. To the point now where the opposite is true. It's like magnetic marketing. The customer wants stuff done, and I'm like, oh, I hate doing that. And I'll tell them, I'm like, dude, I've, I hate doing that. I don't even want to do that shit. Well, who, who else is going to do it for me? I'm like... Dude, it's, it's unreasonable how much I would have to charge you because I don't want to do it. <laughs> and I honestly say this to my customers that I'm cool with. I'm at, I don't know, 145 bucks. All right, done. Do it. I'm like, okay. And I'm still pissed that I got to do it because you begin to learn that paper, is, money is just worthless paper. The real value is in your time. The real value is in your hard work, and the real value is what's really in your heart and where you choose to leverage and put your time. And if what you're doing isn't creating true value towards your dreams, it doesn't matter. I, I swear to God, if you're making, you can make a million bucks a year, but if you're fucking miserable, the money is not going to make you happy if you're pulling up in your Audi R8 or your whatever you're, you're driving to do something you hate every day. Because once you get past survival and you got the bills paid and you get out of that just like trembling fear mode, then it becomes like uh, more about purpose. And nothing, where'd you go? Oh, nothing is more grinding because it feels like a grind to do something that's not rooted in purpose, that's not rooted in your core, that's not rooted in what you feel called to do. I really like what David Data said. He said, sit down in a room with a notepad and a pen and do not come out until you know your purpose and Rumi the great philosopher said do not die with your music still in you putting out a, another book this year called your first year in the landscaping business I'm pretty sure that's what I'm going to name it it's going to be about all the trials and tribulations you go through as a landscape business owner it'll be about the shit you go through when everything hits the fan and I like to talk about the stuff that no one else talks about you know like I really like the lawn care millionaire and I learn a lot from his channel but I also like for somebody to stoop or swoop to where I'm at and say dude I know what you're going through and it sucks I've been there and this is what I learned <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Audiobooks changed my life. Right now I'm listening to Money Master the Game by Tony Robbins. It's like $35 or something in the Audible store. If you're a subscriber, you can get it for one credit. I think it's like a 26-hour long book, and I'm listening to it for the second time. It's all about the stock market, uh, investing, how mutual funds are bullshit how these financial analysts and advisors will just rip you off to fill their own pockets. And when you're saving up for retirement, you can get feed to death and really how to set out a plan for uh, leverage and wealth for financial freedom. It's an amazing book and a lot of it honestly still is over my head. And a lot of these books that are written by wealthy people are geared towards people that are already making 500,000 or more a year who already are, know a lot about the financial markets and have already been in, in the investment game and lost money and been through that those type of frustrations. But the only way you're going to learn about something is about by dipping into it. It's uh, with Stephen R. Covey in The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, amazing book with a lot of frameworks in it laid out. You know, like you're in a trench, you're on a path. Even though you feel like you don't have time, just take one shovel in a different direction and start to carve out a little trench, a little stream in a different direction and get water flowing. 
even if you don't have time and just revisit that every now and then and before you know it that trickle turns into a flow and the flow turns into a flood yeah I, I subscribe to uh, Cosmic Consciousness by Ken Wilber. He talks about uh, different lines, level states, and stages of consciousness, and integral consciousness, and uh, all these different paradigms and perspectives. And he's, I had to listen to this audiobook literally three, four times to start to adopt the language and begin to understand and, and consume it. Yes. But there's nothing more powerful than being right here in the now by letting go of fear. And choosing to be in present moment and be right here, right now. Because cycling the fear, the past dramas of the things you went through in your life that were like nightmares, you can manifest them and live them over and over again. But this is not that. That is that. And today is a new day. I gotta go, I gotta drive. She likes when I drive. Jit supply? Put the dog in the back seat, and he always jumps to the front. Can you pop the trunk so I can put the umbrella? Hey, pop the yeah. Pop the trunk. It's dark out here. I can't believe my phone's not dead. Catch you on a flip flop, bitch All right, over and out. I'm about to drive, and I'm not going to be periscoping while driving. That coffee's freezing. Peace out, bitches. <laughs> Later.